I'm at a farm at Newmerka. I'm an owner and an operator of an irrigated cropping enterprise. And it's located in the uh, southwest corner of the gravity fed uh, Murray, Valley, Murray Valley Irrigation uh, District, which is in dark green there on the first slide, just, just under the word main in Yarrawonga Main Channel. Uh, later on, you'll uh, oh, firstly, it, I should point out that this is the, um, uh, what the, the whole entire Golden Murray water footprint that I'll be referring to as the GMID, and, uh, and uh, later on in my slide, and it's and Golden Murray Water is, of course, a wholly owned, uh, wholly Victorian government owned statutory water authority, which is really quite different to the way things have been set up in uh, New South Wales. My family's journey with uh, irrigation commenced in the late 1940s near Newmerka, and my forebears purchased land that ultimately was provided with a gravity irrigation supply. For me personally, I dairied on that same farmland up until 2008 and now I run that same property along with others that I've since purchased nearby as a 1,230 hectare irrigated cropping enterprise. This background means that uh, I'm well placed to understand the irrigation issues uh, of, of the Northern Victorian Gravity Irrigator and further to this I've been a uh, keen student and sizeable participant in the broader southern connected Murray-Darling Basin water market and I'm certainly watching with alarm as to how the future is unfolding. Many irrigators in my region are, in my opinion, suffering from change fatigue. Ever since the millennium drought demanded a radical rethink about how we acquire and use water on our farms, the changes have been ongoing and significant. In a practical sense, the largest of these has been the separation of water from land, better known as unbundling, which occurred in July 2007. A vitally important policy change still not properly understood by a vast number of Northern, Vic Northern Victorian irrigators, landholders and indeed the government who created it. The whole water debate is continually politicised by all sides of politics. Water has the dubious honour of being both the lifeblood of a vast ecosystem and the vital ingredient of irrigated agriculture. Little wonder it attracts such emotional and heartfelt responses among all stakeholders and indeed the wider community. This reality means politics at both a national and state level just simply cannot leave it alone. For gravity irriga irrigators in the GMID, the cumulative effect of less water available for consumptive use will have a profound effect on the viability of all irrigated farming operations. Long gone, as David's slide pointed out, are the days of cheap water supporting a large irrigated pasture-based dairy industry, the key traditional large-scale water user of Northern Victoria. These days, all irrigators need to be acutely aware of what the up-to-date value of water is and how to alter their farming practices as a result. Unfortunately, many irrigators are not giving their water ownership and use enough attention and the solution will only play out in the fullness of time when the economics of the situation will force them to. And so where to from here? Most importantly, we need correct settings and then very long-term stability of water policy, particularly in relation to annual fixed rates and charges methodology and the water trading rules. Governments need to to recognise the ramifications of poor water policy settings and the subsequently higher likelihood of unintended consequences. For example, here in my second slide, uh, it shows the channel network of the Murray Valley Irrigation Area. It tallies up to a total of 930 kilometres of Golden Murray Water owned and operated and largely modernised channel and covers 128,000 records. Golden Murray Water records show that there are a whopping 2,100 landholder customers in this area alone. The stark reality is that there is an enormous amount of infrastructure already in place and it is costing more per megalitre of water used as time goes on. The increased costs will be partly driven by inflation but mostly by the currently inevitable decline in water usage as water sellers seek out the highest value users i.e. permanent plantings and cotton. Both industries which are considered largely unviable in the GMID for a variety of reasons. 
Obviously, Golden Murray Water, as a statutory authority, has the right to sell the land to collect unpaid rates. However, in my view, it will not prevent the breaking down of the system in the GMID, which will occur when an exponential number of landholders are unable to find money, find the money to pay for the annual water rates. What an absolute tragedy this will be, given the vast expenditure of taxpayer dollars on on-farm efficiency and, Golden, and on the Golden Murray Water Connections projects over the last eight or ten years. For many, for many customers, especially for those landholders who own irrigation land without any water share, without any water entitlement, the ongoing fixed annual rates and charges, uh, uh, the annual fixed rates and charge by Golden Murray Water are already extremely cost prohibitive and ultimately will very seriously threaten the financial viability of the entire GMID. This is not the forum in which to go into more intricate detail on this matter, however, I'd be happy to, to discuss it with whomever at some later time. <coughs> Depending on where the basin plan goes from here, the increase in water usage on higher value crops, uh, and even more so on proposed greenfield permanent planting sites, will be the key driver of change in the in coming years. The broader southern connected Murray-Darling Basin water market has a number of very important areas where it can and should be significantly improved. But regardless, it will be the key facilitator of the changes still to come, and the gravity-fed irrigation districts of Northern Victoria are sure to be the losers. And frankly, I don't believe it will be very pretty. Please ask lots of questions. <coughs> 